artist, my name is Liv and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. As those of you who watch my channel already know, this whole channel is about showing people who are neurodivergent like me how to express themselves through art. Do you like art therapy? Well then this video is definitely for you. I have come up with four different art therapy exercises that have helped me immensely and I believe it can help others as well. And these exercises are mainly targeted towards the neurodivergent community, however the activities can be fun and enjoyable for everyone. Also, all the materials I use for each exercise will be in the description below so that you can follow along with me. So with all that said, let's get into some art therapy. For this first exercise, we're going to be making my favorite dessert, macarons, using bottle caps, which is environmentally friendly and fun. To start off, you just need to take two bottle caps and super glue them together. Give them a few coats of gesso, then take some craft paint. I'm using Apple Barrel acrylic craft paints and paint your macaron whatever color you'd like. I'm painting mine orange to represent an orange macaron. And for the outside, I'm using a light orange. For the middle, I'm using a dark orange for the shading. Moving on now to the cream of the macaron. For this, you can use white puffy paint. You can also use regular white paint, but I think the puffy paint gives the cream more depth and looks more realistic. To finish off our macaron, you can use some Liquitex gloss varnish or Mod Podge high gloss varnish spray, which works even better. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our bottle cap macaron and a real macaron. These macarons looked so yummy, I ended up making five more off camera and sealed them with a Mod Podge high gloss sealant. They all turned out looking so realistic, I actually went out and bought some actual macarons as a little snack. For this exercise, you're going to take some watercolor paper and some watercolors. I'm using two types, one in the palettes and one in the tube. A water brush or a brush and water and a rag. Then you're going to start painting whatever flowers you'd like. And make sure you're using watercolor paper for this. I'm a massive perfectionist and I love to plan everything out first before I start making art. However, I feel like it's holding back my creativity and stopping me from growing as an artist. I want to be able to occasionally leave that all behind and just create a beautiful piece of art without planning or overthinking or trying to make it look perfect and just go with the flow and let my emotions be my guide, which is something I really struggle with. So I hope that by doing these exercises, I'm able to overcome those challenges. I started having a lot of fun with these watercolors and added some details like some leaves and shading to the flowers. I don't work with watercolors very often so I was having a lot of fun experimenting with them. I ended up adding these green vines which looking back I don't know if I should have done that but it felt right in the moment which was the goal of the exercise so it doesn't matter. Then I colored the background a very light green. After you finish painting your flowers, we're going to be taking my favorite art supply, the one and only Posca paint pens, and finding the black one inside my box of Poscas here, which was luckily right on top, and we're going to be tracing the flowers we just made. This was my favorite part of the exercise. I really liked looking at my flowers and just outlining without having to think too much about it. We're coming to the end of this exercise now and during this process I made a few mistakes and past me would have spent ages trying to fix them but future me was able to let go and they ended up being a part of the artwork. The bolder I got the better the painting became and it turned out better than I thought even with the vines. To start off this exercise, I recommend doing this outside on grass or pavement, but I'm doing this inside because I couldn't figure out how to record it outside. 
Then you want to grab some cups, some straws, bubble solution, a bubble wand, and food coloring, and finally some watercolor paper. There's two methods of doing this. For the first method here, you're going to take some cups filled with some bubble solution and a straw and blow into the mixture until the bubbles overflow. Then take your food coloring and very quickly add your food coloring to the bubbles before they start to deflate. Then take your watercolor paper and put it on top of your cup. So for this second method, take your bubble solution in your cup and add some food coloring to it. Then dip your bubble wand in there, take it out, add one or two drops of food coloring to the bubble solution that's on the wand. Then you can just blow the bubble out onto the paper at a distance. Because I was indoors, when I blew it into the wand, it popped in my face, so I switched to using a straw. And when you're adding the drops of food coloring to the bubble wand, you can use more than one color if you want to. By the end of this exercise, my hands and my face were absolutely covered in bubbles. But this is the finished result. I experimented a lot with this exercise and it was really fun and I really liked how it turned out. This exercise is very common in art therapy and very fun. So to start off, you're going to want to take a pencil and just do random scribble onto the page. I closed my eyes and scribbled until I felt like stopping. Then at this point, you can look at the scribble straight on for a few seconds, then turn your sketchbook a different direction and look at it again. And you keep doing this until you find shapes that look like something to you and just draw whatever you saw in those scribbled shapes. And for me, I found shapes pretty quickly, which looked like flowers to me. I love drawing flowers and painting flowers, so I feel like my subconscious was just telling me to draw more and more flowers. Now this step is optional, but after you draw everything in pencil, you can then outline your flowers and scribble with fine liners. I'll be using my uni pen and micron fine liners here. I took a thick liner, 0.3, and outlined the flowers to make them really stand out and to make it obvious that this is what I saw within the scribbles. Then I took my finest liner, which was a 0.03, and outlined the entire scribble, making sure I followed the pencil lines I made as closely as I could to stay true to the exercise. Here's another scribble drawing that I did off camera that I wanted to share. And if you want to add some color to your scribble drawings, you can color in your drawing with marker like I did here. You can do this exercise using whatever materials you want. You can use pastels or markers, but I really like the classic black fine liner or scribble art look. And I think this turned out looking really pretty. If something is holding you back in your art journey, art therapy is a great tool to help you overcome what's holding you back. Whether that be art block or the issues I had, these exercises take you out of your comfort zone and allow for self-expression and creativity to thrive. And the best part about art therapy for me is that it is amazing for people with disabilities. Having something like this is a great way to help release those negative emotions that comes with the struggles of being neurodivergent. It's relaxing, it's fun, and most of all, it's therapeutic. So what do you think about art therapy? Do you find it helpful? Have you ever tried it? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, like the video, and stay creative. Bye! Thank you.